Hey everybody, Craig Cottle, the director of Nature Reliance School and co-host of the Survival Show podcast coming at you today for our Manly Musings segment because I am a man and I like to muse on occasion. That's why we're calling it Manly Musings, so thanks for joining us. I have a fantastic discussion point today and uh, uh, I'm going to dig right into it rather quickly because I don't have a lot of time to cover a lot of information as best I can. But what I wanted to cover today, which is stepping outside my norm because stepping outside my norm on this subject is worthwhile, is to discuss a project that David and I have been working on for several months. Uh, when I say David and I, I should say David has been at the forefront of getting this off the ground and doing um, most of the work, and I've slid in on this action a little bit and helped in the in the behind the scenes aspect of it. So what I'm talking about is the tiny guide. Um, what came, uh, what brought this about is that David uh, many years ago had uh, started collecting and looking at small guides. Uh, funny enough, I had been doing the same thing and had been interested in writing and putting together my own small guide. And both of us saw that there were problems with the ones that were currently available. Although there was a, a real old one, and I can't even remember the name of it, that David had that was, that was absolutely fantastic. It was really good. And uh, it was one of those things where uh, we, it, it was not available anymore. Uh, David had actually contacted even the guy who wrote it, and it wasn't available anymore. So what we set about doing uh, and again, he did most of the work on this. What he said about doing is developing a tiny guide that can be something that could be put into a pocket, something that could be put into an Altoid tin can, uh, glove box, any number of places, and uh, be something that you could utilize to help you in a survival situation. And here is where uh, he got me involved, and here is where, quite literally, I have a different perspective on it than he does. Uh, and so I wanted to cover that today because uh, we'll definitely be getting his perspective on it. We're going to talk about this at another date together. But what I wanted to do is focus on my viewpoint on it and how I see this guide being used. Because I see this guide being utilized in two very distinct ways. Uh, first off, the obvious. Uh, we have a tiny guide, and what is involved in this tiny guide is basically... A bunch of pieces and parts, and I'm going to go over these more individually in a moment, a bunch of pieces and parts uh, to help you in a survival situation and in a, quite a range of different topics. And again, I'll go over those in a moment. Um, the thought is, is that you have this guy that's easily carried. You can have it with you. You can share it. It's, it's incredibly, incredibly affordable. And that way you can have 10 copies of it if you want. You can have one in your glove box, one in your wallet, one in your tin can, one in your pack. Uh, you can buy it for all the scouts in your troop because it's affordable. And what you have in your pocket is just a wealth of information. So uh, a, a significant portion of what I wrote for the guide came out of my book, Extreme Wilderness Survival, the concepts that came out of there. The same concepts are true in this guide, which is basically it takes you through the mindset, skills, tactics, and gear that you need to be able to survive basically anything, and that's what we call it. It's basically a life insurance policy for you. And so what you have in this small, condensed pocket form is... Um, my books, several other books, books that David has read, our mindset, our teaching, the experiences that we've had teaching people, and uh, that goes a long way. Uh, and let me explain, is that a lot of people are real academic when it comes to survival, meaning they read a lot of books, they watch a lot of YouTube, um, they watch a lot of TV shows, and, and basically they've learned a significant amount of information. And so when they share information, they parrot it. They, when I say parrot, it's like a parrot. They just repeat what they've heard. This guide is different. Uh, my books are different in that it's based primarily on my experiences. And so uh, the mindset, skills, tactics, and gear that I talk about are all things that I have researched and I know work because a lot of them I have put into practice to make sure they work before I wrote about them. The others, uh, because I'm a statist statistical nerd, I did a tremendous amount of research and make sure that the methods and that I teach are all things that statistically stand up to stress. And so that is what's going into this guide, uh, the Tiny Survival Guide. So um, 
it's there. It's it's going to be utilized for you. It's going to be a very a, a good thing that you can utilize under the stresses of survival. But here's the side that hasn't been covered with this yet, and I want to make sure I accent today. It is also a fantastic learning tool, meaning if you take this guide and you go through it, and, and basically the way David very expertly laid this out is that he has it numbered, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And basically you can go right down the line and see the things of importance. For example, the first thing, number A, or letter A is how to use this guide. We literally teach you how to go about utilizing this guide, how to go ahead and use it now before you need it and to go ahead and use it after you need it. And so what I mean by that, if you've ever followed me for very long at all, you know that I like to teach methods that are proactive, not reactive. So we want this to be something that you can rely upon under stress, but that's reactive. Here is how you can use it proactively. Again, pull it out, go through, look at letter A. This is how we use the guide. And one of the things that comes out in the guide is that we have QR codes for quick links. And some of that uh, is, is in development right now. Some of it's already set. But what we can do is we can continue to adjust those QR codes as we move along. And we can set those up. Like, for example, we, if we have an organization that wants to buy several of these, like several thousand, then we can personalize it just for that organization, which there's a couple organizations we're working with already, where we can develop videos or we can develop written material just for this this unit or this agency or whatever it might be. And that way um, we can, for the general public, if that's you, then we have videos and links to stuff that is specifically for you. Now, so as a learning tool to be proactive, let's say you do A, then you go into B. B is before you go. This is preparation. Okay, straight up. It is preparation. The things that you need to do before you go the things that you need to have, the mindset you need to have, and all the things that go along with it. Because this guide is full of, and this is where David is exceptional, is full of gear checklist. Everybody wants checklists. They're always asking us about checklists, uh, and David is fantastic at doing this. And so what he did is he put together some checklists that he already had. I added mine in, and so we have a conglomeration basically of the different ideas on gear because there's different approaches and basically we wanted to cover bases for as many people as we possibly can. And so something as simple as preparing what kind of things that you need to have is going to be vital. So uh, let's just go through a few of these and I'll talk briefly about some of the things that are in the guide itself. So letter C is bug out or stay home. You know, we go through the decision making process of should you stay home or should you go? Um, warning, danger zone, that's D. Are you in danger right now? Here are some things that you can do for active shooter, for example. And again, this is what I mean. During an active shooter event is not when you need to be reading this guide, okay? I'm not saying that if you're stuck for long term and you're in a hide somewhere, you couldn't pull it out and read it. But you need to read this guide when you get it so that you have active shooter response mindset skills tactics and gear. You have some things that you can do so that you're not stuck in an active shooter situation. So survival first steps is E. So what kind of things come up and how do you determine your mindset? Uh, one of the things that I impressed upon David to put in here is the idea of stop and law of three. Stop, think, observe, plan, and actively stay alive. We've got details on that that I don't know that we've ever shared anywhere. The law of threes are there to help you understand what your priorities are. We talked about this in a podcast recently. Very in-depth on the law of threes. Rescue. Here, This is a great use for this guide. You're, you're stuck somewhere in a wilderness survival, even a disaster readiness due to a hurricane or something like that, and you don't really know how to set yourself up to be rescued. This guy will tell you how to do that. First aid prevention. You gotta take a first aid class. That's the first thing that we say at the top of this is get into a first aid class, get in a stop the bleed class. But we also have some fundamental things that you can get, including a checklist that you can put together and have both a trauma kit as well as a basic first aid kit. Moving on, some of the other things, obviously shelter, water, and food. We're gonna cover those in detail. Uh, there's always a lot of requests uh, for and, and here's another good example of something you can do proactively. There's a bow drill kit set up in this guide. 
building a bow drill kit under the stress of a true survival situation is not when you need to be building a bow drill kit. So take this guy to field with you and learn how to build a bow drill kit. There's fantastic sketches. David did all the sketches in here. Uh, all the drawings are of David's hand. He did a fantastic job of, and, and I've said this for years in regards to edible medicinal plants as well as, as uh, tracking, is one of the best ways that you can learn uh, when you're reading something and you're looking at uh, visual representations of it, it is to look at sketches because an artist will be able to capture things in a sketch or a drawing that a photographer, photographer can only get in one aspect. So if I take a picture of a track, for example, it's only that track. But if I try to get a, um, a model, uh, I can draw that so that it covers many aspects of tracking. Okay. So Again, shelter, water, or shelter, fire, water, and over on the other side, we have food. A couple things that we cover is the fundamentals of hunting and trapping. Those are vital. Again, something you need to get involved in before you need it. But uh, what we also have in here is a lot of sections on fishing as well as on eating grubs and worms of that, stage, of that nature, which is a very much overlooked aspect of uh, doing survival. People just bypass the bugs. We're the only country in the world here in the United States that don't utilize insects as a, a common staple in our diet, and it's, it's insane. So we've got some really good plant keys on edible plants. That was something that uh, both David and myself and his wife and my wife all helped in. So uh, we've got some really good aspects there to help everybody. Uh, we've got some navigation, how to utilize your map and compass, how to utilize uh, a number of different ways, what you need to have in a basic land navigation, wilderness navigation kit. Uh, we also show some impromptu methods, how to utilize your watch for determining direction, how to use the stars for determining direction. It was funny, when I wrote this section for the guide, I was also writing my book, Essential Wilderness Navigation, so I was kind of keen on navigation at the time. Uh, obviously, we've got a section on knots to help you with those, uh, and here's where we start to detract and get away from the normal thing that people do in survival. We start Start talking about self-defense and if you've seen our videos on patreon uh, you'll understand there's five basic tools that everybody has hand head, uh, head hands elbows knees and feet and what we do in this guide is show you the fundamentals of utilizing them again for emphasis this is a way that you use this guide before you need it as a learning tool so We've also got some very much worst case threats and some ideas for you in mass destruction, including biological and chemical attacks, nuclear attacks. And again, these are worst case scenarios, but we just didn't want to throw those out and not have those in at all. So we, we've got a small section in there and we've also got, again, some QR codes for some more education on that. That way you can get to what it is that you need. Now, that's the tiny survival guide. I wanted to talk about that directly because I had such a hand in it. What I also want to be able to do is to tell you about the tiny survival card that David designed. So, I'll be honest, uh, up until uh, this discussion and this work, I'm not, I've not been a big fan of these micro kits like this, but there's such a need for them. Uh, what I wanted to do is if I could get involved and make sure they were quality, then I was all about it. Uh, the tiny survival guide is that. I, my, I, am, I am throughout this guide. I helped David as much as I could, and it is as quality a guide as you can get in this small of a package. These cards, um, one of the things when David queried me on this, he would, he would already had this design for the most part when I got involved. But one of the things I said is that they're just made so weak. They're not actually worthwhile. And so I said, if you're going to do that, uh, I, I'm about you doing that, but make sure that it's made of tougher uh, materials than what most of them do, and make sure that people can reuse and practice with it. So he did exactly that. He's, he's built a fantastic card that has a lot of micro tools on it. And again, yes, I understand. It has a knife on it, and it's better for you to have a good old belt knife on your hip, a pocket knife in your pocket. However, if this is something that you can carry in your wallet, in your glove box, when you, hey, oh man, I don't have anything, then these are going to be better than nothing tools, all right? So there's needles here, there's hooks, there's a knife, there's an arrowhead, there's a little saw, and several other tools that David's going to detail. Now, here's what I want you to understand. Right now, as of right now when I'm recording this, 
there are going to be two ways in the near future that you can get this because I know you want to get in on it. First off is Kickstarter. The Kickstarter is going to be coming. And as I was getting it ready to record, I got a text from David saying, looks like it's going to be up real soon, like within the hour. So um, Kickstarter has some things where it has to go through a process. So uh, when you're seeing this, I hope that it's up. I hope the Kickstarter is live. David has been working on it literally 24 hours a day for the last week. <laughs> I mean, he's been working on it for months, but he's been working it on it around the clock. So go check it out on Kickstarter. Also, if you're a Patreon supporter, get in on our Patreon. You can get on on Patreon and get access to this on one of the upper tiers as well. And that way you will be one of the first to get it now. Uh, fantastic resource. Buy several for your family, your kids, your scout troop, whoever it might be. And that way you have the tools. Again, two ways. Two ways. This is your action plan. Well, first off, go out there and get this card. Go out there and get the tiny guide. When you get them, don't just stick them in your pocket. Don't stick them in your wallet and never do anything with them. You need to read it. You need to look at it and go, I don't know how to do that, and then start studying how to do that. Okay, so if you see something in there like how to use a compass and, and what we're talking about in there you don't understand, then get your compass out and practice with it. That way you start to build your mindset, skills, tactics, and gear now. You're proactive with your approach rather than being reactive. So that's my focus. I want you to be proactive in utilizing this rather than reactive because we don't want you under stress, forcing yourself without knowledge. We want you to have that knowledge before you need it, and that's what this guy's going to do for you. So... That has been Craig Cottle, Nature Reliance School of the Survival Show podcast. So thank you for joining me for Manly Musings. I've got a real good topic. I'll get back to me musing on some more um, mental heavy <laughs> type topics next week. I've got a good one lined up too, so you want to check it out. And thanks for always. Thanks for your support. We really appreciate it. Come on, join in. Let's learn together. <laughs>